All right, hello everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thanks everybody for uh, showing up and being here uh, relatively early, especially given delirium last night. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, my name is Derek Parker. I am an engineer at Red Hat, uh, previously an engineer at CoreOS, and now it's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, advanced Go debugging with Delve. Um, and uh, one one disclaimer: um, uh, despite the advanced uh, word in the talk, um, this talk will be approachable for for everybody. Um, I I plan to go through some more advanced things of usage of Delve and some advanced debugging and some of the advanced features that we've added. Um, and also some deep dives into Go and, and things like that. But it'll all be very approachable, and there will be a lot of material for um, everybody from uh, you know, newish Go developers and, and people who are new to this kind of debugging to uh, people who have been doing it for a very long time. Um, so just to give a little, a little preview outline of how this talk will go. Um, there's, there's essentially three main things that I want to cover, um, and then I'll, I'll try to leave some time at the end for going through some actual examples on the command line, um, which will be uh, interesting to do one-handed, um, but maybe I can just add a microphone into my beard or something. Um, so <clears throat> the, the, first, the first thing that I'm going to cover um, is what makes Go different. Uh, so uh, what, what about Go necessitates new tooling, new debug techniques, things like that. Um, and a lot of, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a deep dive into some of the, the interesting features and, and a lot of the things that make Go different fundamentally from other languages. Um, but I'll also go into how that ties into debugging and, and how that can tie into, um, uh, just in general knowledge of what your, what your program is doing and how you can figure out when things are going wrong. Um, uh, after that, I'll talk about what makes Delve different, um, how, it, how it handles some of these differences in Go, and, uh, and the things that it, that it does to make your, your Go debugging experience a lot better and a lot more successful and a lot less painful, most importantly. Uh, then I'll, I'll talk about the state of debugging in Go, um, kind of piggybacking off of the state of Go talk that uh, we just watched. Um, there's, there's not going to be any emojis in my slides, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, but uh, but there's, there's a lot of interesting things uh, for debug support that are coming up in the 110 release and uh, most importantly in future releases, 111. There's slated to be a lot of really interesting, important changes, so I'll cover that. And then, uh, as I mentioned at the end, I'll, I'll try to save some time to go through some examples on the command line. Um, and and run, run through a few things to, to give everybody an idea of how to use it and what kind of things you can do. <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, so one of the things that I, I tend to like to do just to kick off these, these sorts of talks is to get a feel for the room um, so how many people before today uh, have heard of Delve? Awesome, quite, quite a few. Um, some, some who have not, so that's, that's great. Um, this will hopefully be a new uh, tool to use in your, your daily development toolbox. Um, uh, the people who have, have heard of it or, or whatever, how many people have actually used it? In, in, okay, cool, quite a few people. Also very exciting. Um, for the people who haven't, also, this will be a good introduction um, and, and uh, talk into some, even some advanced techniques in that. So, um, again, hopefully another tool for your development toolbox. Um, okay, so moving forward. I want to I spend some time talking about what makes Go different and why new tooling had to be created in the first place. Um, and just just understand fundamentally 
uh, what are what are some of the interesting things about Go, and, and what are the, specifically from a debugging standpoint? What makes it difficult? Why is the language so different? Um, and what 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 interesting things can you can you what interesting problems that you, can you run into with Go uh, that you might not run into with other languages when it comes to debugging? Um, so. The, the reason why I think this is important is because I think it's important to understand what's happening in the programming language and the process and things like that that you're running, especially when it comes to, to debugging. The more you understand fundamentally, the more you'll, you'll be able to um, go forward and fix uh, having that knowledge. It'll, it just makes it a lot easier to, um, solve, to, to dive into problems and, and solve some of these tough issues. So here's a list of uh, some of the things that are that that make Go different, make Go stand out, and and affect um, uh, the the debuggability of it. So first and foremost, one of the most interesting things um, is the different execution model, and that ties into the next point a little bit uh, with the the runtime and scheduler. And I'll I'll dig into all of that stuff in in pretty good detail here shortly. Um, but fundamentally. Uh, Go, the, the execution model is different than, than any other programming language. And this is one of the things that's exciting about, about the language and brought, brought many people to it. Um, but for traditional tooling and traditional debugging techniques, it can, it can be confusing um, and, it, and it can be difficult uh, and, and break a lot of existing tooling. So what do I mean by different execution model? So in a traditional process that's running um, on your system, uh, from from the the perspective of like a debugger or something like that, the smallest unit of execution is the thread, right? The operating system thread. Uh, as long as you're staying on the same uh, on the same thread, you're generally following the same uh, uh, execution path. You're staying within the same context and frame and everything, and life is good. You're figuring out your problem, and uh, and you're on your way to to solving it. With Go, it's a little bit different. So. Fundamentally, the, the smallest unit of, of execution is the Go routine. Um, and this is an important distinction for many reasons, which I'll, I'll, I'll dig into uh, later in this talk. But um, when, it, when it comes to, to debugging, what you, what you want to do is you want to step through, obviously, and, and step through your code and, and see what's happening. So when you're stepping through your code, um, uh, it makes it very difficult to figure out what's happening if the the code that's actually executing moves out from underneath you, uh, and this can happen with Go because of uh, uh, the execution model, right? So Go routines are multiplexed onto different operating system threads. If the tools that you're using are not aware of Go routines, which Go routines are running, which Go routines are running actively on threads and things like that, uh, it's very possible for things like uh, context switching to happen, where the code that's actually executing um, is moved out from underneath you, and you end up uh, at, a same, at a, the same spot in the source code, but you're on a different Go routine, different stack, different memory, looking at different variables, things like that, which um, if you're not aware of that, can, can make debugging really uh, difficult and confusing. And I'll dig into all of that a lot more later. Um, so uh, the, the second part is the, the runtime and the scheduler. Um, there's, there's some interesting things with the runtime um, uh, when it comes to uh, everything from you know, function calls to a lot more. And the scheduler kind of ties into the different execution model, um, which I'll, I'll dig into uh, in, the, in the next few slides. Um, another difference is uh, that, that can be a little bit tricky is uh, Go's memory layout. So for example, um, over over the years, the 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 stack setup has changed within within Go. So uh, uh, it started out contiguous, moved to segmented stacks, and then went back to contiguous stacks. Um, there's also um, you know the Go routines uh, stack. There's the system stack for C Go and and other things. Um, so uh, stitching a lot of those things to, together can be difficult um, and and uh, can make can make debugging difficult potentially for traditional tools. Um, the garbage collector as well, not 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 a huge issue when it comes to when it comes to normal debugging, but for some advanced debugging features, uh, that's that's something that that is definitely of consideration. The type system, 
um, uh, Delve knows Go really, really well, so it's able to um, uh, interpret some of the different types, interfaces, and things like that, and display them um, uh, a lot, a lot better. Um, so, moving on, let's. I, I want to spend some time digging into the the scheduler um, and and what it does, and and we'll and then we'll, we'll look at how it kind of um, impacts uh, debugging. Um, so, um, just to uh, just to introduce a little bit for those who aren't familiar with the actual scheduler, the scheduler is the the piece of the Go runtime that manages operating system threads, um, moving Go routines around, things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so the the components that make up the the scheduler internally. Um, are known as the P, the M, and the G, um, and they're explained a little bit right there. So P is processor, M is thread, which is actually a machine in the internal parlance, um, and G is go routine. Uh, so, um, like I said, P represents a, a CPU processor core. Um, when you when you're manipulating go max prox, this is in, internally in the runtime. This is the what what you're manipulating. Um, it uh, it has it maintains a, each each p processor uh, uh, value maintains a queue of runnable go routines um, and that that'll be important a little bit later. Um, so in uh, the m is the OS thread uh, m uh, the thread needs a a processor context to actually execute um, and. Uh, we'll we'll start executing the go routines that are um, that are attached to the the processor queue um, and, uh, and and just pick them off and start executing. And then finally, we have go routine, um, which you know is uh, a concept that I'm sure everybody is familiar with. Um, okay, so. Why this is important for for debugging and and specifically with Delve is um, it's it's kind of important to be aware of like context switching and um, and through that uh, how that happens via uh, like work stealing within within the scheduler. Um, so one of the one of the fundamental problems of debugging Go programs is the fact that as I mentioned earlier. As you're stepping through your code that's running on a Go routine, um, it's possible for context switching to happen. Now, what that is is the Go routine will be paused, uh, put back on onto uh, a, a Go routine queue somewhere, whether it's on the, the queue of that processor or somewhere else, the global queue. Um, and it's potential. There's there's potential for that Go routine to be stolen by another processor and thread inserted and and executed there. Um, so if the tooling doesn't understand that fundamentally. You're going to thrash around, and you're going to end up in different places um, in your in your actually actual program, looking at different memory and variables, and that can be really confusing. Um, so, so context switching, as I mentioned, is is when when a Go routine um, uh, goes from running to idle and potentially switches to another thread, um, another execution context, and this can happen for uh, many different reasons. So, uh, blocking syscall. Uh, blocking I/O, uh, it can happen during a function call. Um, there's there's a stack stack growth prologue um, where where uh, if if the, the stack the go routine stack needs to be uh, grown, the it, the the actual code for that will run on the system stack, and um, another go routine can be run in its place on that on that thread. Um, runtime go is uh, is an internal function that you can use to to cause this um, intentionally. And then creating a new Go routine can cause it, and um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a few other things, but those are some of the most important, I feel. Um, so the next thing I kind of want to talk about with relation to work stealing, or uh, context switching, is uh, the work stealing algorithm within the runtime. So uh, I stole this diagram, actually, from uh, from Yana a little bit um, from her talk on uh, the the scheduler at dot go I believe, um, but I, I use different colors and I, I made it myself so um, feel pretty happy about that. Uh, so 
this explains a little bit about like what the scheduler looks like and, and kind of what the layout is. So you have processors. There's threads running on the on those processors. Um, you know that that is like the active thread that has the context of that processor. There's the active go routine that's running. There's local queues for every processor context, and then there's a global queue. Um, so uh, uh, when it when it comes to that. Uh, when, when you have a processor that doesn't have any Go routines in its queue, it's possible that it can steal from the queue of, a, of another processor context, and that's when you get context switching, and that's when you get like Go routines running on different threads and things like that. Uh, so the, to, to tie this back in, the, the, the most important thing is that um, Delve knows Go, right? So it knows about all of these details. It knows all about all of these um, internals and can make your debugging experience a lot saner. Um, it, it knows about the scheduler, it knows about Go types, um, it knows about Go calling conventions and the runtime, um, and a lot of other, other things that just make your life a lot easier when it comes to debugging your Go programs. Okay. So now we'll switch a little bit to something uh, to something different and and get into some of the next areas of the talk. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, debugging Go programs, right? That's why everybody's here. Um, so uh, uh, I want to start off a little bit with talking about uh, just internal Go debug support um, and what that looks like. So. Uh, Initially, debug support within Go wasn't all that great. Um, even, uh, you know, Delve had a hard time doing certain things, even though it was a Go-specific debugger. Um, so that is getting a lot better. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things from within Go, um, from the compiler, uh, linker, and, and runtime that are going to improve your overall debug experience with Delve um, within the next few releases. So 110 has, has a lot of really big things, and, and 111 is slated to have a lot as well. Um, so, uh, I'll, uh, um, one of the one of the big things is improved uh, dwarf information and and overall debug support. So um, uh, we've we've been able to talk with a lot of the, the Go Core folks to improve uh, dwarf information generation. Which, for those who aren't aren't familiar, dwarf is the standard format used um, to describe debug information within within binaries. Uh, so there's a lot of things that that were wrong or, or incorrect or not implemented initially in some of the earlier versions of Go, but as as uh, new versions have have come out and we've complained louder and louder, uh, these have been fixed and and these are some things that we've we've also been able to dig in and, and fix ourselves. Uh, so, for example, some of the things that that have improved is vi uh, better variable scope information, um, uh, even even you know relatively uh, small things like uh, the ability to detect function arguments from function return values. It's a pretty useful feature um, and has has only recently been uh, implemented properly um, from the compiler and linker. Um, better support for cons, uh, improved dwarf information for optimized binaries, which is really important for um, debugging binaries that, that Delve didn't create or debugging binaries that um, did not disable optimizations. Uh, possibility of calling Go functions from within Delve. There's still a lot of discussion around this, but um, uh, but the good thing is there is di is discussion, and so we're we're hoping to to be able to implement that pretty soon. Um, and there's a lot more. So if you're interested about this, you can check out the debugging tag um, on uh, the the Go repo. Um, Cool. So now let's let's move into uh, actually talking about Delve and how you can use it to debug your programs. So one of the one of the fundamental things that that I I had in mind when I started this project and um, as the project has has gone on um, is simplicity. So the Go tool chain is simple. The the tools that you use around the Go ecosystem should also be simple as well. Um, and I think this is especially important for, for debugging uh, because if you're reaching for a debugger, things already aren't going your way. And so um, it shouldn't frustrate, it shouldn't, the tooling shouldn't frustrate you anymore. It should, it should enable you to, um, to solve your problem. So let's go into some of the usage of Delve. So one of the main things that you'll be, that you'll be using is uh, DLV debug. So what this does is it will, um, 
it will compile uh, it will compile your program. So if you run it from within the, the same directory that you have your main package, it will compile your program with optimizations disabled, run it, attach to it, and, and start a debug session. Um, there's some interesting things that you can do with this. So you can also you can also pass a package path. It works kind of similar to Go Build. Um, but one of the interesting things that that I I want to mention here um, that that can be useful for for some advanced debugging techniques is uh, one of the things we've implemented fairly recently is the is the ability to use different backends with Delve. Um, so uh, for example, you can use uh, our our native backend that we've we've written, you can use GDB as a backend. On OSX, we use LDB as a backend um, uh, uh, automatically because of some changes in the, in the mock Darwin kernel that broke things. Um, and, uh, but most importantly and most interestingly is uh, the ability to use the Mozilla RR debugger backend. So folks who, who maybe aren't familiar with that, um, uh, Mozilla RR debugger is a record replay debugger. So it, what it does is it executes your program, records all of the execution, the memory layout, everything, and allows you to replay that. So if you're debugging like a Heisenbug, right, where it's very difficult to reproduce um, or anything like that, if you can trigger that during an RR recorded execution, um, you can play that you can play that back deterministically. Um, so you can always trigger that bug; it'll always be triggered the same way, and you you can. It can make debugging a lot, a lot easier and a lot saner for some tough, um, tough bugs. It also allows you to do interesting things like reverse execution. So you can you can play your uh, your uh, the you can run the process in reverse, in reverse to a breakpoint and things like that, which can be which can be really interesting and really powerful features. Um, the other the other command is delve test. Um, Built a test binary with with uh, with optimizations disabled runs and attaches to it. Um, uh, works pretty much the same as um, as like go test. Um, you can also pass uh, pass um, like flags to to the underlying go test if you want um, just by doing like dlv test dash dash and then whatever flags you want to pass. Um, uh, attach so you can attach to a running process. Um, with with better optimized debug support from Go coming up, this this is going to be a lot better experience. Um, but for you know for the time being, if you're if you're running in like an optimized binary and you and you attach to it, it could be a little bit wonky. But for the most part, it should be all right. But just something to note. Um, uh, trace trace is another thing that I think is pretty cool. So if you're familiar with like S trace or something like that, you can you can use Delve to trace your programs. Um, and with the with the improved support for being able to tell function arguments from function return values, uh, this feature is going to become a lot more interesting and a lot more useful within the next uh, release of Go and, and some of the, the next release of Delve. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, Delve Core. So Del with Delve, you can debug core dumps. Um, so to to enable uh, core dumps, um, there's a few things. So just make sure you have the proper U limit set. Um, uh, run your binary with go traceback equals crash, and then whenever it panics or crashes or anything like that, it'll produce a core dump in that directory, and uh, and you can use Delve to debug that. So you get all the power of of Delve and what it knows about Go um, to do postmortem debugging, which I think is really interesting and can be really powerful. Um, uh, so also uh, replay. So if you have an existing uh, recording that you've that you've made with RR, you can use Delve to uh, to to debug it um, and run it. Uh, and this is this is interesting if you want to keep the same recording around um, and not just use the backend flag to do the recording and replay for you every single time. And. With that, I'm pretty much done. I don't know that I have actual time for um, any any terminal examples or anything like that, but I'll be around. Um, Alessandro, co-maintainer of Delve, will be around as well, so we can run through examples or talk about it in a little bit more detail. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have some time for Q&A, so if you have questions for Derek, please just raise your hand and shout really loud.
Yes. Um, so the, the question was, are there any fundamental difference between platforms, so switching from different operating systems and, and things like that? Um, and no. So the, the debugging experience should be consistent, um, uh, regardless of what operating system you're using. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the question was, how, how far are we uh, as far as um, function call support within Delve? Um, and right now, there's, there's been a lot of discussion between um, uh, the, the core team on Delve and the, some of the folks on the core team uh, on Go at Google. And so we're, we're, we're in discussions on how we can actually achieve this. There's a lot of really complicated things um, that, that go into actually implementing this feature uh, because of some of the things that I mentioned. Um, uh, but we're, we're actively working on it. We're actively discussing it. We're bringing in folks from the Go like core team and the runtime team and, and things like that to, to come up with the best solution um, so that we can provide this feature going forward. So hopefully relatively soon within the next few releases of, of Delve, um, we'll, we'll have that support. One second. Do you remember when I said that if you're in between the camera and my face, you're on the video? That is still valid. So if you're in between the camera and our faces, you're on the video, live stream to the world, just so you know. Thank you. If there's any more questions, I think we still have some time. Anybody else questions? Cool. Thank you.